Hello everyone, it's Lindsay, and I'm back again today with another Sunshine Stamp Co. video. So I'm going to be using these two stamp sets. The one on the left side is the floral set from the newest release, and the other one there is the Breath of God set. That set is no longer available. You can complete this card with just the florals from the floral set, but I did want to pull some of the flowers from that other set and use them uh, just since I have that set. So uh, you can see here I'm pulling out some stamp masks that I had created and I store in the stamp packaging. What I did is I just stamped out some of those floral images on a piece of copy paper and then cut them out. So we're going to be doing quite a bit of stamp masking today, but you can save those masks once you've created them. What I have here is a piece of watercolor paper. It's cut to four by five and a quarter, so a slightly smaller panel than a standard card size. And I have a stamp positioning tool here. I'm going to link the one that I have down below. Uh, you could definitely do this card with just an acrylic block, but I found it easier with a tool like this when you're stamping on watercolor paper because you can stamp multiple times in the exact same place and get a good clean image on this textured paper. So like I said, it's not 100% necessary, but it is nice to have. Uh, this one is reasonably priced compared to its competitor. <laughs> you may know what I'm talking about, but I'll link this one down below so you can take a look at it. And what I'm doing here is just pulling a couple of the florals from the floral set. And um, with stamp mas masking, you want to take into consideration which flowers you want in the foreground of your image. So I'm trying to decide which flowers I want to be on the top of the pile of flowers. And those are the ones you're going to stamp down first. So I want some of the smaller flowers to be on top. So I kind of fiddle with this for quite a bit trying to figure out where I want it, how I want it lined up. So I don't want to have to trim this panel down once I'm done. So I want to make sure everything gets nice and centered and even. So then you can just close that door, pick up the stamps. I'm going to be stamping with some VersaFine Onyx Black ink today. And you can see you just close that door, rub it down. And I don't get a good impression because again, it's textured watercolor paper. So I can just ink that up, stamp it down again, and it'll be in the exact same place. And I can get a really nice uh, impression with that ink. So. I've completed this card with just using a stamp block and it was fine. It, it was no problem at all. So don't feel like you have to have this tool. It just makes your life a little bit easier. So there's going to be a lot of stamping in this video and uh, I end up speeding it up here in a moment once you kind of get an idea of what I'm doing. But you're just working little pieces at a time. Here I'm working on the next layer. So I'm going to start laying down some of those other stamps and kind of figure out where I want everything to be. I want just a really full floral arrangement in the center of this panel. So and there's probably easier ways to do this. I probably overthought a lot of the stamping, but I mean, it's Mother's Day. They, your moms deserve it, right? They deserve a little extra, <laughs> a little extra effort. So I'm just picking out some more flowers, laying those down. And picking them up. Now before I stamp down, I'm going to go ahead and cover the images that I've already stamped. And that way when I stamp these new images, there aren't going to be any lines intersecting into the stamping I've already done. So I'll go ahead and just lay those down. I need to pick up some masking paper or masking, yeah, masking paper. It's like a sticky adhesive paper um, that you can do use for masking. And that way you don't have this problem where the paper gets picked up. But you can see I'm going to double stamp, so I need to pull those off and lay them back over those flowers again. If I had the adhesive paper, I wouldn't have to do that. I'll link what I'm talking about down in the description bar down below so you can find that. Just ink that up, stamp it again, and now you can see that you have layering of the florals, but no lines intersecting. So that's the purpose of the masking. And I'm just, I've sped this up now quite a bit, but I'm just working a few flowers at a time, adding some leaves, just building this image up in the center and masking out flowers as I go. Anywhere I see something that's gonna cross over, intersect, I'm sure to lay a mask down before I stamp, so. If you have any questions about this, leave a comment down in the description or in the comments down below. Um, I have a lot of other videos on my channel that show stamp masking in more detail if you want to see that. But it took quite a bit of time to get that stamped out, but I really love the final result here. You just have this beautiful floral arrangement in the center of this panel. 
I let that uh, VersaFine ink dry, and then now I'm taking some of uh, the Pastel Dreams watercolors from Prima Marketing. These are new to me. I do have a review on my channel. I'll go ahead and link that here in the top right hand corner uh, so you can see my thoughts on these paints. I really love the colors, and I think they are great for this card. Just really pretty pastel spring colors. I'm not doing any fancy watering color, water coloring, so I went ahead and sped this up as well for the sake of time. Uh, this would have been an even longer video if I didn't speed up a lot of these little uh, bits here, so I apologize for that. But I'm just going in and laying down a couple layers of the colors. I'm not really doing any shading since these images are pretty small. Um, they don't need anything elaborate. And this is really just going to be kind of a background uh, to the card, so I'm not too worried about it. But I'm just going around working in areas and then letting some of those areas dry as I move around so I don't have any of the colors bleeding together. And um, I use quite a few of the colors in this palette. I really like them. They are a pretty opaque watercolor, so you just have to be sure to use plenty of water. That way it doesn't cover up your uh, stamping lines. It will kind of cloudy your stamping lines if you aren't careful and don't get it watered down enough. I'm going to go ahead and just heat set that, dry it, and I'll add in the background. Really, really light wash of this blue color. These colors are pastels, so they are, they have a lot of pigment. They're very pigmented, but they're not very intense in color, and that's just the nature of the colors in that palette. So now I'm going to take my Gonsai Tombi watercolors to use the black, just because there wasn't a black in that other Prima set. Um, and I, with the nature of those colors, I couldn't have really mixed a black. So I'm just pulling a black watercolor from here. I'm just going to add some splatters to add some detail. This card has a lot of white space in it, and so I wanted to kind of break that up a little bit. I'm going to take my T-ruler and find the center of the card. I'm not looking to be perfect when I do this next step with the die cutting, but I do want an idea of where the center of the card is. Now I'm going to be using these dies. These are some letter dies from Tim Holtz and Sizzix. I didn't show the packaging. I'm so sorry. If you head on over to the Sunshine Stamp Co. blog, there is a picture of the packaging, and I will have them linked down in the description bar down below. But uh, these are just some alpha dies. It's great because they have multiples of the letters, so I can see spell out the word mom all at once and I don't have to run my card panel through multiple times to get the M's cut out. So I'm just going to lay those dies down on the center of my card and I'm going to take some washi tape to hold that in place. You, I'm kind of taking some of the stickiness off of my hand before I stick it down because I don't want to ruin this panel when I pull that tape off. So that would be a bummer after all of the stamping and watercoloring we've done. So I wanted to take some of the stickiness off and that's just going to hold the dies in place. And I'm using my Sizzix um, Big Kick machine to cut those dies out. I only have to run this through one time and those dies just cut right through that thick watercolor paper. So they're great. I've gotten a lot of use out of these alpha dies. Um, and they're a great size for Bible journaling. So they're, you should definitely check them out. I went ahead and took out those pieces that um, were die cut out. And then I have a standard card size here. This is a four and a quarter by five and a half card base. And I'm going to attach this front panel using some um, craft tape. This is a double sided adhesive. It's very, very sticky tape. And I'm just applying plenty of that. There was a little bit of warping from the watercoloring, and so I want to make sure that that gets all smoothed out when I apply it to the card. And I'm also making sure that I get some of that adhesive between the letters. That way everything is adhered really well on the card. And you'll see, since that panel is four by five and a quarter, when you adhere it down, you get a little bit of a border around that panel. And I'm going to go ahead and insert the center of the O. So I'm putting a little bit of that double-sided adhesive on that piece. And then I'm going to insert the O into the panel. There's no adhesive on that letter right at the second. And then I can put that center piece in and make sure it's lined up perfectly. And then I can just pop that back out and I know that the center of the O is exactly where it needs to be. Now to add some contrast so you can see that these letters spell out mom, I'm going to add some distress ink. I first pull out hickory smoke and try dabbing that on there and it's not quite dark enough. The 
watercolor paper just isn't really taking that ink very well. So I switched to black soot distress ink and I'm just going to dab some of that on. I don't want to completely cover it to where it's totally black. I still want to see kind of a shadow of the flower stamping that we had done, but I do want to create some contrast so that you can read that that actually says mom. And go ahead and dry that so I don't smear anything. And then we're going to pop these up using some foam tape. So here's some double-sided foam tape. And I'm going to snip some teeny tiny little pieces off. Now this part of the card was a little bit tedious, attaching all these little pieces to those letters. Like I said, those letters are pretty small. And I'm sure that there is an easier more efficient way to do this. If you have suggestions, please leave them in the comments. Um, but this is just what I had on hand. So it took a little bit of time to attach all these little pieces on there. Like I said, it's Mother's Day card, it's a special occasion, so I didn't mind taking a little extra time. Went ahead and removed the back, backing paper and then just adhered that letter down. And now that letter is kind of popped up off the background of the page and adds just a little bit of dimension went ahead and did that for the rest of the letters there. And I'm going to take some stickers from the Tim Holtz Chit Chat stickers. And uh, that way it says love you always. I'm just going to stick those down and then I'll take a fine tipped black pen and go around and outline those stickers. And that's pretty much it for the card today. If you have any questions about the process, please leave a comment down in the comments down below. Be sure to make your way on over to the Sunshine Stamp Co. blog where you can read the blog post for this um, video as well as see how everybody else is working through this month. And subscribe to this channel if you're not already a subscriber. And until next time, thank you so much. Bye-bye.